Good fish, good fish. What do down one shot then? <laughs> dog, good girl. Good dog. Good dog. Good fish. Good dog, come on. Good girl. Good dog. That's a good girl. Drop. There's a good doggy. Yes, good dog, aren't you? Do a little project on walking sticks with you. Fairly simple to make, and uh, at least the way I do it is, and then some of the old traditional methods as well. We don't need very many tools for it. This is a selection of mine from the past, and all we're going to need is some deer antler, if you want to use antler, or some um, ram's horn, which we've got here, or just use a simple thumbstick as this one. Although I'm going to take this one off, in fact, but just a simple thumbstick will come out like these ones. I'll show you these a little bit closer in a minute. But we've got deer antler on the top here and here, and this one's actually been carved and painted with uh, coloured inks to, uh, in, into the encarving and engraving. There's a fish form there, a trout. We've got some lovely sticks here which are twisted. You can actually grow those yourself over a period of time by putting wire around the hazel branches as they grow. All of these sticks are hazel, so lovely wood to work with. Here I put a brass, uh, here I put a copper ferrule around as well, and steel at the bottom. One of my oldest sticks, it's got to be nearly 30, 35 years old now, that one stick. So it proves that they do last. Anyway, as the tree grows and the wire twists the um, branch, you get this lovely spiral effect. So that's something long term, if you've got somewhere where you can do that. Where you can carve into the bark itself to make patterns as well. So let's me show you how we've done a few of these. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make one with this piece of stick. And I'm going to put this piece of deer antler on the top and use part of it as, again, a thumbstick, but also the other part I'm going to turn into a whistle. So it's rather fun for you to see how we can make the whistle as well. So if you're calling your dog up or if you've got an emergency and uh, you want to make a loud sound with your walking stick, I have made a very tall one like this once for a friend of mine in France. She loves it. Uh, this one's just an ordinary walking stick, but I'm going to make a little whistle at the top. So we'll show you how we do that then. Let's have a little closer look at these tops of these sticks before we start. You see here the uh, ram's horn that I'm used, that's its ordinary sheep's horn, from a dead sheep that was up in Scotland this last time I was up there painting. The ordinary thumbstick tops and then making a thumbstick but actually using the deer antler. So I've painted a part of the antler, you can see here I put a rainbow trout on. You can round off the end of the deer antlers as well. And of course then we've got that twist in the wood that I was talking about as well, which is rather pleasant on that. There's the copper ferrule on the other stick. So we've got two there with twists. Right, what tools are we going to need? Well if we're going to use power tools rather than hand tools, a jigsaw to cut the end of the piece of wood off, to cut the bone, this rather lovely little sander, the belt sander, which will enable us to trim around the joint of the bone and the, um, the antler and the wood at the end and the glues as well. Obviously a little drill here, we'll want I've got a three inch screw here um, which is threaded all the way up. The idea being that when we come to the piece of wood to join it we'll be able to put that screw into the end of the wood to about halfway. Uh, take this off on the grinding wheel or you can saw it off with a saw. You could then use a file if you want but use a grinding wheel to point it up again and if we just pilot drill into the piece of bone that's going onto that the, we can just screw that and glue it into there and we use lots of twin bond resin, such as araldite, on that joint there between the two um, and let it set. And then we can use the belt sander to sand it down evenly. So the joint is very simple, just with that one screw. If you wanted to use hand tools, then an ordinary little tenon saw obviously would do to cut them, and hand files or someone would do as well. But obviously it's easier for us with the power tools. 
really that's about it unless you want to start carving them or do anything fancy but some sandpaper at the end just to sand things off and some varnish of course so not too complicated of course I always find my little pen knife very useful I keep it tied to myself um, for safety because it's easy to drop them it isn't a weapon it's only a tool for me just opens up my opener very useful for just carving and whittling and I may want some finer tools and drills to make the actual whistle part but we'll go into that as a separate item now I'm not going to use this stick without the thumb grip I'm going to turn it that way up in fact and have the thick end at the top so I can use the thicker end of the thicker piece of the antler as well which is much, much better for me here and I can shape that into there so I'm going to trim this off first of all. Remember I can trim this, this end, I can, I can trim this off first of all and I can trim this end further later once I've made the top uh, to actually suit the height of the person or myself. Just take that off with a jigsaw straight away. Needn't even put it into a vise. Straight off here. This is that. And we'll, we'll level off this end. We'll do it by eye. There we are. There's our is our basic stick ready to go. Now we want to get the piece of deer antler that we're going to use. We've already taken a section out of there for another job which isn't helping but it'll be fine um, and I want to make the whistle of this piece here so I'm not going to leave this this big pointy piece up here I don't think we'll, we'll round that off later. I'm going to want to chop that off there first of all. So we are just taking that off. Now I just want to take off enough for the whistle part itself and just take off the top of that antler. So I think the whistle will be plenty there. I'll take that off at that angle. And that still will use a lovely piece for another walking stick later. I'll just take off the pointy piece of this just so it's safer. And I'll round this off later with a belt sander. Right, next we can put this screw straight in. We don't even need to pilot drill it. Right into the middle here. Make sure it's straight. But it's not too important because we can bend it later. That should do it. Now all I need to do is go onto the grinder, take it down. We just trim it off. And there we are, there's our point. There are, simple as that, nice and easy. You can see the point we've got ready to go into the other piece of antler when we've finished it. So, for the stick at the moment, that's all we need to do. But we'll base the whistle on the end of this flagellet that I've got. I have great fun playing these. But uh, we haven't got to have all the holes down it and we don't have to have a hole in that end as long as we've got this part. This is, this is the working part here. So what I've got to do is drill a hole down through the antler just far enough as a chamber and then we've got to shape this part and cut this out and down and file or cut a chisel a, um, an angle here for the air to come across. Right, we'll just drill the chamber down first. Very far enough. Now what I need to do next is fill this up again with a piece of wood that has a slight piece uh, gap across the top. The ideal piece is the one I've just chopped off. So if I take this and shape it, I should be able to fit that in only to about there it needs to go. Um, just down to about there look like that. So what I'll do is, again, I've got my knife here in a minute, we'll just um, shape this up. So we'll just trim off the end first. There we go. Now I need to use my knife just to trim off the... the top part so that the whistle will actually allow air across the top. I'll test that in there then and see what it's like. on the way look you still got your opener that's about right there that's about the right size for the hole in the opening 
So now we can trim this piece off here. Right, so now I've got it right, so now I've got it like this. I want it that way up. This piece is going to have to go into there like that. And I don't think I'm even going to need any glue in it, but I might just put a bit in, we'll see. But I want to make sure it doesn't block up the hole and I put push it in. Got to have just enough of the hole. Let me take a little bit more off that. Right, this is now completed. And you can see I've actually taken another piece of horn. I made a second whistle here and um, glued that into the end. Much easier for me to do that and adjust it than it was on this one. But that's up to you. You can use the end of the actual stick to make a whistle or you can do it that way. I'm now going to round this off and then you'll see that it will indeed whistle. There we go. Right, now I need to drill down into here, dead on straight. Because I'm going to make sure that's where the screw goes in that is already in my stick here. See it there. Do it. And that is going to just screw onto here when it's ready to glue. And then all I've got to do is just like that, you see. A little bit to show you. So it's going to go on like that and then I'm going to round all this off. For the moment though I'm just going to go back and shape up this part of the whistle here. Let's use this tool for that for the moment. Now that should be ready to go onto the stick. So we mix up, mix up our twin bond epoxy and uh, Put that onto the stick. Plenty of it so that it squeezes out. A bit around the screw thread, don't really need too much there. And with any luck, that will now go on very nicely. Let's do that. down and on, as tight as it will go, see which way it fits best, oh, it's really nice and tight. Now all I've got to do when that's dry is round it off here, get a nice finish the way it goes into the stick. So we're almost there then, here's our stick with it glued on, just got to fit it all off here and varnish it and without putting any other fancy bands on. Right, this glue is now dried around here so I can start to shape this up. And we can make it as, as loose as that. So there we are. That just needs varnishing now. I'm just going to sand off some of the rougher edges on this. But there's our finished stick. So all this needs now is varnishing and it's another one of my collection, isn't it? Right, well we've completed this whistle now. It works okay. Brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. Now we'll just, just, now we'll just make it work with the, with the dog and we'll see if the dog actually will respond to it. So um, I'm going to throw this dummy out. I'm going to throw this partridge out. Stay. Right. Yep. Good girl. Good girl. That's a good dog. Get on, get on. Good dog. Yeah. Good girl. Come here. So you see, the whistle works fine. And if I'm out there with her and my walking stick, we can do that. So the next thing and the final thing to do is just to varnish it. And uh, we'll have a working walking stick whistle.